Welcome back, everybody, to the Freelance Network Podcast, a podcast by content creators for content creators. So today, we don't have a guest. We're back to the original trio. The Fab Three. Yes, the Fab Three. <laughs> uh, we need a fourth member just to say that. Yeah. But that today... Would be Fantastic Four. Yeah. The Fab Four, the Beatles, Will. <laughs> anyway, you it. blew it. Get we, with it. We, we can go into how uncultured Will is another time. Mm-hmm. Um, so today, we're doing like a little Q&A where we took some questions from Instagram and then also we reached out to some of our friends that are content creators and not to get some questions. We're going to do a couple of these episodes just because we actually got like a lot more questions than I thought we would in about an hour of asking people. Absolutely. Yeah. So because we didn't want to like cut any questions short mm-hmm. and like not fully answer them and everything. So, yeah. So I'm pretty excited. What about you guys? I'm excited, too. But you also didn't, didn't mention we're going to probably post another one of these sometime in the near future. So if you want your questions answered. Yes. Follow us on the gram, the Instagram at the Freelance Network Podcast. Just yeah. freelance. freelance Network. Just, uh, just or, uh, Freelance just Network freelance. Podcast. Facebook works too. We'll, we'll Facebook make a Facebook too. post for all for all you adults listening that don't have Instagram. We get it. Absolutely. And yeah. have any of your questions answered. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a quick shout out to me. Yes. Yes. Cassie. Yeah. Okay. So I um, I'm gonna dedicate this whole episode to him because uh, we have our first sponsor slash donor. Um, Complaining about being poor works because my very, very generous Uncle Bob um, donated some money to us so we can afford to buy a fourth microphone so we can all be on a podcast with a guest. With a guest. Yeah. And we don't have to rotate out and uh, some pro- promotional items. So, so we're going to work on getting those. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you to my Uncle Bob. I would fly you out and put you up in a hotel and have you on the podcast, but you don't like New Jersey. So, I don't blame can't him. Blame him. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in Florida, but uh, yeah, no, he won't come up to New Jersey for anything, except he's coming up for my graduation, which is very much appreciated. Oh, of course. So he's yes. going to come to New Jersey. He's yeah. going to come to New but Jersey, but I'd like to say thank you, Uncle Bob. Thank you, Uncle Bob. You're now my uncle now. Yep. My you favorite have, Uncle now Bob. Now you have two nephews. <laughs> Woo! So, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for that. So, this episode is for Sponsored you. Sponsored by Uncle Bob. Sponsored. Sponsored. I'll put like a nice, like, flashing. Hashtag spawns. Yeah. All right, so I we pulled out the best six questions we could find. We have a bunch more that we're just going to save for another They'll time. be in another episode yeah, soon. absolutely. So let's just get right into it. Uh, the first question was asked by our friend Reagan Germain. She said, what's the best way to go about pre-production? Which it's funny because we all like laughed <laughs> when when she asked us this question. Pre-production like, is just such a funny word too. It when is. you just think of it. Well, because... Because it I could mean, just mean really anything. Yeah. But for Will and I in high school, like when we were making projects, like, oh. no offense, Miss Lucas, you're probably going to listen to this. We love you. But <laughs> nobody took it seriously. Like, we would write scripts and, like, completely change the script as we were going. Mm-hmm. I always felt bad about it. But, like, for me, pre-production, like, I didn't start taking seriously until I started doing bigger, longer projects because I realized how important it is. And also until I started interning for Oak Leaf because seeing all the pre-production they do going into their projects so I was like wait like this is actually something I do need to figure out and do so like for my senior thesis film in the class Professor Newman built in an entire month just for pre-production I was like a whole month for pre-production like that's unnecessary but then I realized how helpful it was doing storyboards and mapping out your shots beforehand and knowing that stuff then also I wrote like eight drafts of my script I never would have expected to do that so I mean, I think in general, it was like until I was like 21, I was like, let's wing it and just kind of do it. And then afterwards, when I started doing more serious things, I was like, I think I need to actually do pre-production because it saves you time in the long run. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, go back on Luke when we were both in high school. (laughs) So white. Excuse me. But when we were back in high school. Building off of that comment. (laughs) Yeah. Building off. So our professor, our TV production teacher at the time, Miss Lucas, would always be like, okay, you got to do pre-production. And I remember being a TV one, she gave us this, and I'm just like, I'm looking at it, just, what am I doing here? (laughs) I was just so confused. I'm just... I mean, granted, she did try to teach us it was important. Yeah, she did. She did teach teach us it was important, and she would, you know, emphasize like, you know, you should do it, you should do it, you should do it. And when I would like write out a whole script, and I'm like, I'm not following the script. (laughs) I, I'm sorry. Too many times. I'm, I'm sorry that. You know, the seeker came out. I know, like, I didn't take it so seriously. And when I went to OCC, I took it a little bit more seriously. I mean, their TV production, their TV 
broadcast studio class, there wasn't really that much because there wasn't a whole lot to do. And then the the second one, I want to say that was the first editing class, and there was the on-field one, right? The field production one. Yeah, the field production one. I took the um, editing one really seriously because I did really good in that class. Um, wow. I'm, like, really sick right now. And then going to, like, the other one, I didn't really take it so seriously. But then the news production one I took really seriously because it's like, okay, you have to make a news story. And I never made a news story before, so I had to really sit down and jot out my ideas, kind of kind of make it like an essay in a way, too, because, like, here's, like, my thesis, like, here's what I want to cover, and then it's, like, point one, point two, point three, and then kind of wrap it up. Yeah. So I thought of it as an essay in a way. So, like, in the same way for me, like, when you started doing bigger, more serious yeah. projects. Yeah, it's like, oh. It's like, like putting this in the is, time is worth it. Yeah, because, you know, you don't have to go back and fix, you know, a big chunk of it. You might have to go back and fix, like, you know, a couple portions, but... That's about it. Yeah. What What about you, Cassie, in pre-production? Yeah, I, w- I want to hear this. <laughs> ha, 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 funny. Um, <laughs> so the only time... Ah, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> the only time I've ever really taken pre-production seriously is when I was being graded. Um, as we, are, <laughs> we are such good examples right now. We're all like, it's a joke. <laughs> Even though it, it's so important. You, it's yeah, so important. it is really important. But like, I've never really worked on a serious project for myself where I needed that much pre-production. I mean, I've written scripts before, but I'm so bad with scripts because I don't like the feeling of being rehearsed and like yeah. have that. I'd rather just wing it. And yeah. like I know that's not professional, but if I was in a professional setting, like I would be able to whatever. You'll but buckle down, but yeah. Yeah, but if it's my own project, I'm just like I'm literally filming a project this week, which you're gonna be in, oh, and yeah. there's no script. We're yep. winging it. Yeah. So <laughs> I haven't whatever. acted in years. This will be interesting. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. It's my final project for my editing course, but um, yeah, Reagan. I don't know, girl. I mean, yeah. I really, I really don't really, know. I, really. I genuinely think, though, like to answer like the question, like pre-production is important because it saves you time in the long run, and like putting in that extra time of boring work in the beginning it makes leaves, your life easier. It while leaves you're all filming. like the str- it leaves out the headaches that you exactly. may run into because like it's just planning everything out better. Yeah. I mean, like winging it's fun and all, but like to write a script, to write a shot list, to write a storyboard out, have all that stuff. I think it could be beneficial. I mean, it should. Or it is. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think any of us can literally say any more about pre-production because we all should practice it more. We do for the podcast, actually. A little. Yeah, we do a little. Bit Not like on scripting there. stuff, but we do actually. Well, we have Monday meetings now. Yes. Yes. We, we're we're getting more professional. We're getting guys. more organized. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Woo. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's move on to the next question. This was submitted by Steve Reynolds at Bowentie314 on Instagram. Uh, who is your favorite favorite animator? So. Steve asked this, and I, I figured he would ask some kind of question about animation, because th- for people who don't know him, he does a lot of visual effects videos. Like, the first video I ever saw of his was a sock puppet reenactment of Star Wars with visual effects. Mm, so, like, de- he's definitely got to come on the podcast to talk about that stuff soon. But I, it's, like, tough for us to answer this, because none of us really study animators, so we kind of just went with, like, things we know i mean i kind of took an animation class too oh that's right i oh, forgot yeah. you did that yes yeah, so. yeah you should have yeah, an answer for this <laughs> will will I mean, you, go. Will, well, you so, go first so to answer his question who's your favorite animator butch hartman <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i said that immediately and they laughed at me but uh, you know he was been a big part of my childhood i watched fairy fairy godparents when it was just the waist down it's of the not parents. Even the it's name not of even the name of the show. Very odd parents. It's, okay. It's, it's better fair. than the people who hold just on. called it Timmy Turner. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's called Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, by the way, for people I've, that don't know who Butch Hartman is, he's the animator for a lot of Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon yeah. So, and Will, tough, Will forgot tough to explain. Puppy. Tough, well. tough puppy. That tough was the puppy. one that I said, a rough dog. <laughs> <laughs> rough dog. Close. And also, you know, the best animated series of all time, Danny Phantom. At me Danny if you have Phantom any, actually you know, great. at me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, because I will definitely argue with you with that. At Will Gethard. <laughs> Wait, we can do a whole debate episode where we bring on two fans versus Will about arguing Danny Phantom. <laughs> I will argue anyone with it. Yeah. So yeah. I come in there just so like open minded. Yeah. So I took an animation class because uh, when I came to Stockton, it said you had to take like a transfer course, and at the time I was taking it with my uh, two friends, and they kind of we just saw. Uh, intro to animation it was like a 2000 level course and we thought oh that that's a pretty interesting course why don't we take it 
And of course, myself, the day before the semester, I can't do it, guys. I need to drop. I cannot do this. I'm like bugging out. I don't know. I think it's always the fall that I always stress but, out about. But it ended up being pretty good for you guys. Like, yes. I mean, you so, passed. Like, I passed with an A. Surprise, I mean, I'll, surprise like me. That, that cl- well, he didn't judge us about the artwork. It's oh, about know, how you yeah. were able to tell the story. Yeah. And being, you know, a communications major, especially in media production, you have to always tell a story with your projects. It was easy for me to do that, even though I would just draw stick figures. Just through, like, a new medium, though. So that's yeah. pretty cool. You know, you got to learn a whole lot through this one Adobe uh program i am completely drawing a blank on is it character design or is it animate animate yeah so you forgot animation was on adobe animate <laughs> we are professionals here <laughs> yeah so well we had it we had to make you know a ball bounce that was interesting because you had to like you know make like the ball like expanding like it's hitting a ground and, like, so bouncing are back you up. saying right now that you are your favorite animator no i'm saying butch hartman I think, is I think but you know i'm, sh- I'm <laughs> seeing like, trying to, to just do bring it back to question <laughs> yeah uh, I mean, like, you kind of see what they did, but they always, just, you know, sketch it out. Most of the time, they never really got, like, a computer to really do this stuff on, especially, like, you know, you're going really before computers. So I got to say Butch Hartman's my favorite animator. Cool. Okay. Even though I went completely sidetracked. You did. Yeah. What about you? My favorite animator is Will Gethard. <laughs> <laughs> he can make a ball bounce. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't um watch a lot of animated things so i don't really have an answer to this i mean i actually kind of now being asked this question like want to look up animator i mean i just I, I watch the only the only thing i watch like voluntarily now that's animated is bob's burgers and i know a lot of people have like a really horrible opinion of bob's Burgers. i feel I like, like it's that either show. they love it or they hate it yeah, yeah i not. nothing it yeah. personally so luke's like the one person that's yeah. just like okay it's, yeah it's just like that show it's like oh it's on tv okay yeah not that i have cable but yeah. it's on Hulu. Hulu, yeah. So, yeah, no, I – creative question, but I really don't have an answer for that. Yeah. Well, so. for me, it's, like, hard to pick because in high school I took Japanese class, and whenever my teacher was absent, we would watch a Studio Ghibli movie because he said we would learn about sp- culture through it, and also mm-hmm. we would watch it in Japanese with subtitles to hear the language spoken. So Studio Ghibli movies, like, their mastermind is Hao Miyazaki – He's been making movies since, like, the 70s, like, animated movies. And they're all really cool, interesting, different movies. So I would say he's one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, like, the animators' names, but I saw Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse recently. And that movie, I wanted to see it because it was the directors who did the 21 Jump Street movies. And I was like, that's a fun combo. And I didn't expect it to be, like, a great movie, but it was. Like, the story was really cool, and the animation was beautiful in it. Like, I just was, like, taken aback by it. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, that movie was really cool in that sense, but I feel like we just have to have Steve on to talk about animation more. So, Steve, this is us calling you out. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to debate some great animated films. Will versus Steve about Butch Hartman. I'm going to love Chicken Little's the best animated movie ever. It's said. You lost a bet, and we're not even going to get into that. That was gross. I'm going to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> thank um, you, Steve. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the next question was from Gianni Fiore. Uh, why is it important to take inspiration from other content creators? And then the second part is who inspires you? Two parts. I like it. Two-parter. We'll go first. Uh, oh, wow. Pressure's on me. So All right, Cassie, go <laughs> first. <laughs> okay. I'm just reading the questions right. just so I know it. <laughs> Oh, he's sipping water. Yeah. For you podcast listeners, Will yeah. is very stressed out about answering these questions. I'm so sick right now. I'm as sick as a dog. I'm the only person in this room that is not sick. I got sick from Please. Will. I'm I'm gonna You're not knock sick on to a wood. This isn't wood. I'm the one with. Why do I still have these up there? <laughs> he just threw gummy worms <laughs> on the ground. That's <laughs> mean. That's mean. But uh, yeah, no, I'm the one with a. Uh, All right, Will, answer the question. Okay. Healthy immune system. Go ahead. So it's important to take. Um, uh, it's important to get inspiration from other people only because you could get burnt out so easily. Like me, for example, my sports podcast, like I just get so burnt out trying to make graphics only because like I don't get any feedback back. Like I like them, you know, like Luke's the only one that gives me feedback, <laughs> like, like feedback. Like so like I, I take the time I take like an hour and a half to make like six simple graphics. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it take most of the time it takes me a while to just move kind of like the team logos around. And I just post them on Instagram. Like, I just want, like, you know, the satisfaction. So it kind of burns me out that I don't get the support back. Like, oh, hey, like, thank you for doing these. Like, thank you for this. Thank you for that. So, like, that's where I kind of get burnt out of. But, like, someone that that does inspire me is, like, Gary Vee. Because he's kind of like those people that don't appreciate you. Like, get them the F out of your life. Like, just, like, push them out. Kind of. I'm going to bleep you anyways. 
You're going to bleep me out for just saying F. And you know what the F, F is? Respect. Fire truck. <laughs> That's a Smosh reference. Oh I my know. God. I, I right. miss that anyway, song. We but, get... you know. <laughs> Inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So. And also, I just want to say this: like, I want, like, I want to work for VaynerMedia in like the future. And he just motivates me so much that I want to kind of put my thoughts and ideas like in his business, you know, through either Vayner Sports or Vayner Media, you know, whichever I can get. You know, he's just such an inspirational guy. He's just so positive, and it's you know helping me to get positive. It's been a while since I've been really, really just a positive person. Well, we maybe you should change that, bro. I know. Yeah. It's slowly yeah. but surely. Once <laughs> once I once I get over this cold, I'll. You know, seem to, you seem better. to be very self aware. So I mean, I feel <laughs> like I feel like I feel like this is a personal moment for Will that like we shouldn't have been here for. Will's like I'm finally filmed, being positive. Literally, again. this is filmed therapy. This yes. is film. Well, I mean, like we talked about with Joe Gibbs last week, like podcasting's therapy. So it is. All right. Well, Cassie, what about you? Um. Well, this question, like, I had trouble answering. Um. I mean, it's, it's just really difficult to come up with original content all the time. And, like, there's other, you know, content creators that come up with, like, great... You see it on YouTube all the time. Someone comes up with, like, a great video idea, and then people will credit them and then take their idea and spin off of that um, with, like, challenges and stuff. But, um, yeah, coming up with original content is very difficult. So it's it's important to have someone who inspires you, but also learn the difference between stealing content and just using it for uh, inspiration. Um, someone that inspires me, uh, absolutely, hundred percent, Jenna Marbles on YouTube. I she has been on YouTube for years. For She's so long. So She's ancient. Long. She's uh, the first person I ever subscribed to. On YouTube, um, her content always changes and evolves, but it's always consistently amazing. Like she got, I think it was twenty million subs. That's a, that's gotta be one. That, that is recently. a big milestone. That's she, one of the top ones. Then yeah, yeah she, she just reached twenty million, and for to celebrate, she literally took a nap on camera. <laughs> That's how I want to be when it I It has up. so many views. But, like, people, she just does it in a way that, like, people want to continue watching her. Yeah, yeah th those are, like, my favorite people because there's so many, like, live streams on, like, Twitch.tv where just people just sleeping on live stream and people just donate to them. Like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. <laughs> Pay yeah. me to sleep. But Jenna Marbles is a great example of that. I mean, I feel like she's been making videos since we were in middle school probably. Mm -hmm. And, like, I remember watching them in middle school, like, dying laughing at that stuff. Yeah, she started, I remember I, watching her videos, like, as soon as she graduated college. Because she's one of the few YouTubers that actually has a degree. <laughs> um, yeah, so. We're she, in that category with you, Jenna. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, or you two will be, I am. Yeah, we will be in May. But uh, she graduated college and she started making this, like, content. And it was just, f like, sh comedy. And she just kept going. And it just constantly changes. She's nowhere near where she was when she first started. But she just comes up with these, like, weird ideas. And they just get so many views because she's passionate about it. So that that's foreshadowing something that we're going oh, to yeah. answer in the future. True. So, yeah, what about? So Maria? I feel like this whole like the whole point of making content is to like well m mostly entertain people but also like for us like in our podcast it's about other content creators so we're giving each other feedback mm -hmm. like the second like you think like you're the best or you've got it or whatever is like when your content just drops in quality like i mean i we all listen to so many different podcasts and like that's a way of us looking for inspiration in other people hoping to find something that they do right that maybe can make us better. Like, the second, like, you're content with what you're making and, like, you think it's great, like, it's going to suck mm -hmm. because there's so much you can learn from other people. And, like, it doesn't matter if, you know, we're a young podcast. Somebody who's been making a podcast for a long time could listen to us and be inspired by it. Yeah. And then vice versa. It doesn't matter, like, if they're old and we think they don't know what they're talking about. There's merit to pretty much whatever anybody has to say, as long as they're coming from, like, a good, positive place, mm -hmm. like, constructive criticism. So, like, I think the, the whole idea of just, like, building off each other and working with other people, like, that's just, that's the whole point, like, especially of what we do. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to constantly meet interesting people that do things different and, like, find different ways to try things. Like, that's what I love about this stuff. And, like... Every one of our guests so far all does content creating very differently, but they've all inspired me in a different way at some point. And I think that's really cool. But like my main inspiration that I'll talk about is Yes Theory on YouTube because 
Yes Theory, much like what Gary V did for Will, like they opened my eyes to just like a whole other point of view that I was missing. And that like that was through their videos and their Instagram posts, like their Instagram TV posts, just all that stuff. And they do this thing which I think is fantastic where you can sign up for a weekly newsletter where Matt from Yes Theory writes out something once a week that he sends to everybody on Fridays. And it's like Friday mornings, like Wisdom with Matt. Mm. And like, that's how I start my Fridays is I read that. And like, it's just, sometimes it's short, sometimes it's really long and it ranges from what it's about. But like, that constantly inspired me because every week I get that along with like their weekly episode. But their content, like they just want to make other people happy and Mm. like push themselves and push other people out of their comfort zones. And I find that to just be so cool. And like, they always are taking feedback from other people. They're the first to say they don't know how to use Adobe Premiere and they hire editors (laughs) and like, they, they don't know how to use cameras and stuff. They're, they know now because they, they are like starting to like figure it out after four years of being a channel, I think they're at or three, Mm -hmm. but like, that's like where I want to be one day is like that kind of sphere where like you're inspiring other people, but you're also, they know they're not perfect and they always are trying to make themselves better and learn from other people, so. Yeah, they're a great channel. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I don't know if you saw they're going on tour. They are? Question mark. I saw. Oh, wait, yeah. Well, because they did their live event, Yes Live, and they want to, like, do it in multiple cities. Yeah, I I saw it in my subscriptions. I didn't actually watch the video, so that's why I said question mark. But, Yeah. uh, yeah, no, that's, they're definitely a very, inspirational channel yes. they were they were the ones who created uh the viral post about justin bieber eating a burrito sideways when it wasn't actually justin bieber fantastic content oh yeah that's the most inspirational one. Oh yeah yeah but yeah so i mean i just think that like learning from other people is like half the reason why we started this podcast mm-hmm. and like i mean everybody that i've met that's successful is always open to criticism and learning so yeah but yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that question, Gianni. Yes. Thank you. So uh, the next question is from Brendan Walsh. How do you stay motivated to create things after long days of other activities or work? It's a good one. Mm. Um, I think that like this stuff is like an escape or like passion projects for us. Mm-hmm. So everything else we're doing is so we get more time eventually to do this. Like Right now, you guys are full-time students, and you both have jobs. Mm -hmm. And, like, a year ago, I was in that same spot, but now I'm also just working, like, three jobs. But I think for us, this is, like, enjoy, like, like fun to do. So when we're working our other jobs, knowing, like, we're making money here, and then we know we'll have an hour on Monday to record. And, Mm -hmm. like, we look forward to that, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that staying motivated is because we enjoy just doing it and it's just fun for us and like it kind of applies to like other things too like I mean I've been working like really long days but I know that like I work that long day so I get to work on the podcast the next day yeah you know or like work on a film the next day or something Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely what about you all yeah like you know like working over the summers like I would work you know from opening i would get to like my job at like 8 30 now leave to like 10 30 and just like the 14 hour days every single day through the whole summer like that's exhausting like you're gonna have really i feel great after some of those shifts and then part of my french i feel like shit after those other ones like it, it like it sucks i didn't know you spoke french wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> you know you just gotta you know like sometimes you know working like other jobs like that's not what you want to do so like it feels like you know you actually like have to work meanwhile you're focusing on like you know like I focus on this. I focus on my other podcast. Like, I just don't think of it as work. I just think of it as, okay, I can, you know, work on my platform and make it. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a job to well, me. Well, because, like, also, the other ones feel like jobs. Yeah, to like, help you yeah, stay like, grounded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like, no, like, I have to work to earn yeah, that. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be working there for, you know, the rest of my life. I don't want to be working, you know, a minimum wage job. I want to be, you know, making a good living, living on my own kind of helping start that process so like you know you have to go through the very bad days in order to get to like the good days so like that kind of motivates me in a way yeah mm-hmm. okay and uh excuse my whiteness for this but bouncing off a of will <laughs> <laughs> building off of this um so i also worked a lot over the summer like a lot and um, with me yes with will as one of my jobs so i have purposely worked 
jobs that I knew I wasn't going to like. So like it motivated me to stay in school and stay on this path um, because I didn't want to get too comfortable in something and be like, oh, well, I don't have to finish school. I could just do this. I purposely went out and I worked three jobs that I just can't see myself doing for the rest of my life but because part of it's making money but also yeah yeah so um just like knowing that I was able to come back to this campus and uh for the last time but come back to this campus and create content and you know work towards something that I actually want to work on in the future that doesn't feel like work to me just makes me feel better it's just like suffer now and you'll enjoy the rest later um but I just, yeah, no, I, working retail definitely <laughs> inspires me to, uh, yeah, never work retail again. That, yeah. Like I'm just, it just tires me out. Cause it's weird too, because I have, I'm not going to disclose what, but I have three autoimmune diseases <laughs> and, um, I'm just fatigue comes with all of them. So I'm like three times as tired as the normal human and, working retail or working like long jobs like that just tire me out but when I'm working a production job and it's like a 12 13 hour day I'm not tired after because it's not stressful to me like I enjoy it so yeah working just honestly well I remember when I was younger like it didn't work out like this because I ended up loving my summer job Mm -hmm. shout out to Heartland Golf but (laughs) my dad would always tell me he's like listen you're not gonna like every job you have he goes it's a job because it's something that you can do and it's something you can make money at. And he's like, you work those jobs so one day you can work the job you want, Mm -hmm. you know? And, like, for him, he's a teacher, so, like, he's in school five days a week, but he loves teaching. Before that, he worked as a garbage man on Long Beach Island in the summers, you know? Yeah. And, like, he did that so he could pay for school. Yeah. So. I mean, there's jobs and then there's careers. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, the jobs are supposed to, me- or like, supposed to motivate you to move towards a career. Yeah, like, supplement you with money, mm-hmm. teach you things and stuff. Because, like, you learn yeah. work e- ethic at certain jobs. I mean, yeah. like. You deal you, with difficult people, like, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you learn different things like that. Yeah. Like, because it's not like you, you're not going to turn 14 and be eligible to work and work a job. Yeah, make it 50000 a year. Like, yeah, I know. You have to work up to that and learn, a, learn lessons about, like, working and being, like, in the workforce so i think part of like this stuff is like it motivates us to get through those days like even if we have a really long crappy day at school or work it's like yeah but we get to do this and this is pretty cool like the fact that we get to have this platform be able to create stuff yeah Yeah, like branching off of like luke's question luke's question (laughs) like you know what's your dad like what's your like dad so he wants like motivate you to like you know you're going to get that eventual job. Like, working on the boardwalk, like, I loved it for, like, the first two summers. And then, you know, they just tried taking, like, control of me, and they were, like, screwing me over because they thought I was just comfortable there. And without the help of, like, my parents and Luke, I would probably still be there and just be miserable. Yeah. Because Luke knew how miserable I was. Work. I mean, like, working at arcades is just rough. <laughs> Yeah. I know. It's like the the workers are just set up to fail. Like customers despise you because this game doesn't work. No, you just didn't check the coin slot. Like your coin's right there. <laughs> yeah. But or it didn't give me the right amount of tickets. No, you just don't know how it works. But <laughs> yeah, we could all complain about the crappy jobs. But I I just gotta say like I'm just happy that we get to do this and like mm-hmm. like the fact that this is here waiting for us. Like like I don't want to wake up at eight in the morning, even though I woke up super late today. Um, <laughs> like I don't want to wake up super early and get to Stockton, but I know that I get to work on a podcast that I love doing and it's like worth getting through all the other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, no, that was a really great question. So shout out to Brendan Walsh. Yes. Um, so the next question was submitted by my friend Meg Dendy at Meg the Geek on Instagram. She's actually going to be a guest in mid-November, so stay tuned for her episode. If you like The Walking Dead, you're going to want to listen to her episode. Oh, yes. She's met, like, half the cast at least. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. (laughs) She has her own pocket. We'll get into that when she's a guest. Yeah. But. Spoilers. (laughs) Spoilers. Um, so she asked, what would one do if you're dealing with creator's block? Mm-hmm. Honestly, creator's block has been like 50% of our meetings of just us staring at each other, arguing over who came up with which episode topic. Same. No, it's these two arguing, and then it's just, they look at me, and I'm just like... Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much yeah. it. I mean, it's like... it's. I'm just laughing because this was like... It's just Sometimes it's hard to come up with like a good topic to mm-hmm. talk about for a long time. Mm-hmm. 
And that's why we're doing this episode today because we couldn't think of one. So the original YouTube content. Yeah. Q and A. If you don't know what you're doing. So Meg. Meg. We did not know what to talk about. So this is what we're doing. This is how we got through Creators Block. Yeah. Well, they also wanted me to mention. That, oh. uh, <laughs> um, for some reason, I get my best ideas for this podcast on the toilet. Toilet epiphanies. I Shit, don't know. Not a toilet. I don't know Shit, why. Not a toilet. Yeah, I hate you guys. Shit, not a toilet. But it's tr- like there's been so many times where we're sitting in this room and like. We have no idea like what to talk about. Like, we're just staring at each other, like, blank faces. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going to the bathroom. And I literally text them from the bathroom, like, guys, this. We have to do this. I this, have an idea. This has happened guys. twice. I don't know why. There's, like, no real science behind it, but... Well, fun fact, yeah. that show Scrubs that I always tell you to watch, like, yeah. the sitcom about, like, comedy and doctors, mm-hmm. there's a whole episode about toilet epiphanies. Because there's a toilet on the roof. And they all have epiphanies on it. That's great. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's my answer, Meg. Yeah. It's so Meg, just sit on your toilet and you'll come up with a new idea. I mean, some of my like writers block, like my ideas come to me when I'm like in a dead sleep and I just wake up and I'm just like, <laughs> that's a great idea. Like it's just three thirty. I'm like, wow, that's so good. Well, because I feel Can't like you force your brain to think, and then your brain's like, chill. Like you're not gonna think of a better idea by thinking, think of a better idea over and over again. Yeah. You know. And what's the most relaxing place? The, the toilet, toilet or a bed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for me, I feel like I'll get so fixated on a topic and like I'll want to solve it no matter what. Like I want to fix whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've witnessed me do this while editing. Like yeah. just I'll be like, I need to fix this right now. And then I get so angry thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And then I just need to chill. I need to go and distract myself for like a half hour. Like sometimes I'd watch Scrubs. Like I'll put on an episode of a TV show or something. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, all right, my brain's relaxed, like, and I go back to it. I'm like, wait, why didn't I think of this? And I just go. Like, it's, like, weird because we all react differently to it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, creative block sucks. Like, oh, yeah. it sucks. But I think also one thing we're going to do for the podcast is we're going to try and come up with, like, a bank of ideas mm-hmm. where, like, we have a document of, like, oh, we don't know what to talk about today. Let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. Right now that bank has zero dollars. Zero dollars and zero cents. But it's got to start somewhere. So. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll figure it out. But, yeah, the creator's block is the worst. But, like, that's where you can also go back and, like, get inspiration from other creators. Exactly, yeah. I you, mean, like, yeah. I we, we always say, like, we waste hours on YouTube. But, honestly, like, wasting hours on YouTube is, mm-hmm. unless you're watching, like, compilation videos or sports highlights. Um, like, uh, Will. <laughs> Will. <laughs> literally, that's all you do is memes and Cats and sports. Oh, I mean, I, I love can't. Cats. I can't talk because I watch Vine compilations all the time. But but, but vines are very yeah. inspirational. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> those are like legit, like six second videos. Like you need to like think of your idea and be able to sell it within it. six yeah. seconds. Pretty mm-hmm. crazy storytelling. But yeah. like what I was saying, like if you're watching Jenna Marbles or any YouTuber, you're like that's you're looking into what they're doing and why it's working, mm-hmm. and like. And if you're watching Gary Vee content, it's the same thing. Like, because Gary Vee is just, like, loud and angry but inspirational, and you want to watch it. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, Yes Theory is just, like, heartwarming and, like, makes you feel good. So, like, that's why you, like, watch. Like, so maybe tying those two questions together, just watch something you like or enjoy to distract yourself because, like, focusing too hard on it just doesn't come up with answers. Yeah. Maybe sit on a toilet. Maybe go take a nap. But... I mean, just kind of try things out because clearly all three of us have different methods. So Yeah, yeah. just relax yourself. Find something that relaxes you and then you'll come up with it. Just play with your puppy, Meg. Yeah, your dog's so cute, girl. Mm. Love that dog. Um, Shout out to Zoe. Uh, All right, yeah. So Yes, thank you for that question, We might actually talk to you more about that uh, when you're a guest. So we'll 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 figure it out. Um, So the final question we have, and we save this one because it's the... It's the juiciest. It's the juiciest. Uh, this question is from Jordan Ellis, one of our first guests that we had Shout on here. Shout out to Jordan. She asked, would you rather create content that you love and no one else sees it or content that you don't necessarily like but it goes viral and everybody else loves? Luke, start us off. Oof. That When she when she texted you that, I was like, that's a good question, Jordan. Yes. Like, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, see... If you're not passionate about it, I feel like it's not good content. Like, like, I think this podcast is going well so far because we all enjoy doing it mm-hmm. and we're all invested in it because it's something we like. We not we may not be getting the views we want right now. We appreciate the views we are getting, but 
Mm-hmm. I'd rather be making something that at the end of the day I'm proud of because like it, it only takes one view from the right person to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. So like instead of thousands of views for a viral video that I don't care about, mm-hmm. then I'm just like, yeah, I made that. Like I don't like if I don't want my name on it, what's the point? Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. Like I want to be proud of the things I work on. And there has been times where like I make something I'm really proud of and it gets no feedback and like whatever. And then I just like fish for feedback by sending the link to people. Mm. But but or I make a video that like I just kind of throw together and just do and people are like, yo, that was hilarious. I'm like, oh great. The one I spent five minutes on, yeah. people like, but the one I spent a month on, nobody watched. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I just know that it's like we talked about this with Joe Gibbs too, like the completion of a project doesn't matter if people watch it. You mm-hmm. made that. Yeah. You got through it. You you made the idea. You made it happen. You executed and you finished. You followed through on it. And there's nothing like that, like actually following through and finishing up a project. So, I mean, for me, like going back to the question, I'd rather make something I'm passionate about that nobody views. Yeah. What about you, Will? Yeah. So I would be in the same boat as Luke. I'd rather make something that I love and, you know, get no feedback on because that's what I like. It's kind of like my sports podcast. Like, I get 35 downloads. No one says anything, so I don't even know if it's good or not. I've been trying to do, like, new new things with it. I like the baseball one. <laughs> I like that basketball one, too, if it ever gets released. Ooh. 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 Dig at Burn. Me. But I'd rather make something that, you know, I love if it doesn't get any feedback. Like, you know, for example, like, the second part of the question, like, something that goes viral but you don't like. I think of, you know, one of my favorite YouTubers growing up, Ray William Johnson. Oh, and wow. he made <laughs> Equals 3, and he came out by saying, like, he's not been happy making it. And he's going to get a new host. And he was getting new hosts. And all of a sudden just stopped. And that's kind of when, like, you know, I felt, you know, a piece of me, like, gripped out. Because, like, I love it. But he doesn't love it. And he's just been doing it for the viewers. You know, so, like, kind of go, like, hand in hand. Like, you know, if you like the fame and all that, you can make something that you don't like. But if it doesn't really bring you true happiness, then I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Also, too, like, if you're making content that you don't actually love, that's what's going to create burnout. Yeah, yes. you're going to get burned out way, fa- like way faster. Yeah. yeah, so it's better, like, if you want more content, do what you love. And, like, I know people say, like, don't care, like, don't care what other people think. But you also have to have that spectrum of you have to have some sort of feedback because it's going to turn into I'm putting something out and getting nothing back. What do I do? Yeah. So, like, having good feedback and, like, adapting to the feedback is always good, but don't give in to something that you think exactly. you don't like. Well, because, like, they always say, like, don't care about what people think. You should. You should, absolutely. But don't take it, like, personal. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't don't just be heart. like, oh, wow, this one person doesn't like it. Well, let me just throw that project out. We yeah. needed that. I needed okay. that paper. By so. the way. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, like, if somebody says, like, I don't like it, be like, okay, what didn't you like about it? Yeah. And, th- and work through it and figure out what you can do different. Yeah. And don't just cater to one person. But yeah. yeah. Don't be closed minded. We said this earlier in another question, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just just take the feedback as it comes in. Adapt to your thing, but also continue doing what you love. Don't just cater to the audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, another example for that, like I have a hockey portion on my podcast. I don't I don't participate in it because I don't really know hockey that much. You and someone flyers. and someone just and someone just, you know, left left a comment being like, why would I want to hear anything from a Flyers and a Capitals fan about the New Jersey Devils, and the person deleted it, and they all wanted to go after him. And I, I messaged the person personally, being like, "Thank you for your feedback, and we'll make sure to like consider into future episodes." Like, you know, you just got to be positive with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's pretty much, you know, what we would do. I mean, we're not experts. Disclaimer: throw that across the screen. Not Disclaimer: experts. Not, not experts. experts. Not yeah. Experts. I mean, I just think like. The views will come if you're passionate about it. Yeah. Like, obviously not overnight, but, Mm -hmm. like, Mr. Beast is a great example of that because... He was grinding for, like, 10 years. He made video... I think it was, like, eight years, but he started out on YouTube pretty early, and his videos were so dumb, Yeah, but he liked what he was making. He didn't blow up right away, Mm -hmm. but now... He has so many sponsors. He makes so much money. He he also invested in Bitcoin. 
very early on. That's how he has all of his money. Mm-hmm. But and now he's got that trees campaign going on where they're yeah. gonna donate yeah, two, twenty million trees. That's amazing. Like yeah. Mr. Beast's videos are what him and his friends want to do, and that's why it's let's sit in a hot tub full of ramen noodles, and the last to leave gets twenty thousand dollars. But it, that's what's successful because they love people want to they want to make it, and then people watch it. Yeah. Like that's why I love his channel so much. Going around a drive through one thousand times. Oh yeah, that was amazing. They went through a, was it Hardee's? Yeah, cook. Hardee's. Yeah, or... and like they, they would order like a cookie or like a single French fry from their one. Fr- they would go they, around like it was. I, so... for, I forgot. Did they use like an actual like you know like a credit card debit card? On oh, Mr. Beast cr- uh, credit card. They, there's no way that that couldn't have been suspended. No, nope. that's like you know <laughs> totally on a different but spectrum. Like, I think he's a great example of that. Where his videos got no views for years, mm-hmm. for a long time. He's been around YouTube for almost all of YouTube's time, and now he's in the top rankings of the best YouTube channels. And he's the, the inspiration for a lot of videos A ton today, of challenges. Yeah. Especially, I think, the, the one challenge you just mentioned, like the last person to leave gets blah, blah, blah. He was the... He's mis- the biggest Correct me if I'm it. wrong, but he was the one of the first. Yeah. And now um, I've seen uh, Kean and JC, who were part of OT2L, like an original like channel. Like they started taking that as inspiration and... They had this huge series that just popped off about like having a bunch of YouTubers stay in a house, and the last one to leave gets twenty five thousand dollars. Which is like Big Brother, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So it it I, yeah that stuff that t- content creators take from other content creators. That's just how it is. Yeah. But they credit them and move on. Yeah, I'm gonna throw so. this out there right now, Mr. Beast, be on the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Also, give us money for new gear because yes, you give pay off money. pay off my rest of my college another thirteen hundred dollars, please. If you do, I'll donate a hundred dollars to your tree thing. <laughs> I'll literally give a hundred dollars back for your trees. Yes. Well, Just, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So that that was a really good question. Like we were all like the second we got that, we were like, ooh. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Big oof. So yeah. yeah. So thank you everybody who submitted questions. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode and mm-hmm. also are inspired if you have a question as well. So you can hit us up on Instagram, Freelance Network Podcast, Facebook, Freelance Network Podcast, mm-hmm. or our email, which will be in the description. I'm pretty sure it's just it's freelance there. network podcast but at gmail yeah, yeah at yeah, gmail.com yeah. so, so reach out to us let us know we're gonna do n- another one of these probably in i don't know how many episodes but like we'll do this every once in a while yeah yeah you know give us a like f- uh rate us on your podcast provider give us a nice little review subscribe to us on Su- youtube yeah subscribe yes yeah so yeah so thank you everybody for listening or watching thank you and thanks again uncle bob yay <laughs>